They say an amusement park is a place filled with joy, of magic, laughter, smiles. The smell of popcorn, cotton candy, and hot dogs wafts through the air. Families on vacation. First dates. The excitement right before you reach your place in queue for the next ride. Perfect days. Nights that remain in your mind forever. But what if things turned more sinister? What if something evil, something unexplainable lurks just beyond what your eyes could see? Something supernatural. What if something waited for you like a nightmare in the darkness? Maybe that's what we'll find in Liminal Land. In the winter of 1975, Liminal Land first opened its doors to the public. Located in Lake Valley, New Mexico, it was, by all accounts, an immediate success. By the 1980s, this massive theme park, engineered by the Caron Corporation, had beaten out even Disney in terms of sales and attendees, who clamored to witness its splendor with their own eyes. It was a mad frenzy. Folks lined up for what seemed like miles to experience the thrills Liminal Land had to offer. It should be of note that Charon, the name of the company who put all this together, is in Greek mythology the one who ferries the souls of the dead over the river Styx to Hades. Given the nature of the park, a family-friendly amusement mecca, this seems like a strange choice. For years, Liminal Land operated with almost total autonomy as local and national law enforcement seemingly did nothing about the bone-chilling events that occurred at the park on a seemingly regular basis. Incidents began to manifest. This wasn't just the cost of doing business. In the world of theme parks, accidents do happen, but not like this. Someone would mysteriously vanish into thin air or a horrifying accident, like twisted disfigurements of parkgoers would occur, and the park would close for a short period of time, and then reopen like it was some sort of bizarre, isolated incident, or as Liminal Land representatives refer to them as, anomalous events. But still, the park remained a destination location. The popularity of the park and its attractions continued to grow, and the public seemed absolutely dead set on living the message set forth by the Caron Corporation to lose yourself in liminal land. Attendees were ravenous. As I've previously said when talking about the park, however, this was proven as dangerously unsafe to do. On May 20th, 1989, after years of reports of strange phenomena, missing persons, bizarre accidents. The park was finally shuttered for good. It all happened rather suddenly too, which is rather peculiar given the inaction that had occurred for years. The official cause for the park's closure was never publicly disclosed. Now, years later, a website and a YouTube channel devoted to the preservation of events that transpired there, led by a group calling themselves the Liminal Land Archival Committee, are slowly releasing details about what happened at Liminal Land. The truth of what really happened is coming to the surface. I too have been conducting research. I have uncovered a password-protected section of the website, which, when unlocked, reveals a photo of Moloch, a deity associated with child sacrifice. Why would an amusement park have something like this on a website associated with the park? And why would it need to remain hidden? Digging deeper into the past, a memorandum found on the Liminal Land website, possibly originally from around the time of the park's closure, reveals that the Lake Valley Police Department were conducting an investigation into the strange nature of Liminal Land's activities. 
So an investigation was underway. A report from the Caron Corporation itself claims that an undercover police officer was found hiding in a restroom and was waiting for the park to close to investigate further. Even more shocking is that he was sent to a Caron facility for further questioning. How close were the undercover officers to finding out the truth of what was really happening? A tape leaked by an anonymous source shows footage captured by a guest, or possibly one of the undercover officers, of a section of the park known as home. These were the hotel accommodations found in the park, located underground and sprawling for miles. A subterranean city that held on to you and hoped you never left. A suburban nightmare. The tape reveals that something might be lurking behind a closed door, and even employees were warned to stay away from restricted areas and to never enter a stranger's home. The tape ends with whoever made it running through what appears to be the Hall of Walls, which is a maze section of the park, frantically reaching its exit before... someone or something catches up to them, and then the footage cuts to darkness. The message on the tape then tells the viewer that those who seek departure will lose themselves. An investigation tape from the 1980s made by detectives, and now on the Liminal Land YouTube channel, reveals that police had uncovered more evidence to suggest some sort of supernatural activity was occurring at the park. After a woman, Sofia Munez, fled town shortly after the disappearance of her daughter. A haunting story found in their home, drawn by Sofia's daughter, reveals that not only had the pair gone to liminal land, but they had entered one of the residences located in the underground section of the park. There, the most chilling drawing of all shows that they met an entity called Mommy's Friend which depicts a monstrous figure found behind a door. Was this the same door shown on the tape leaked by the anonymous source from that home video? Mommy's friend also bears a striking resemblance to not only the park's mascot, Molly, but Moloch, making this disappearance that much darker. Whatever is happening at Liminal Land, it would seem we're getting closer to finding out the truth of what really happened there. And I encourage you to follow the Liminal Land website and YouTube channel as the mystery descends further into depths we may not want to explore. If you do continue, be careful not to lose yourself in Liminal Land. For if you do, you might be lost in the park forever. Forever.